and we are beginning to start to land the plane in our series called These Things. Have you enjoyed this series? From 2 Peter chapter 1, where Paul tells us to add to your faith these things, right? And he gives us a list to make sure that our faith does not become unproductive, but that our faith would produce a substance. And so, 2 Peter chapter 1 is really the theme verse. It says, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to your virtue knowledge, to knowledge. Here's the one for today. Are you ready for it? Self-control. And all my people that love Briar's ice cream just said, oh no. Uh, uh, We're going to talk today a little bit about self-control and self-control meaning we're going to talk about temptation today. I want to tell you before the message even starts, preacher loves you. I want the best for you. And uh, I want you to know that before we get into it today. Now the text that I'm going to be preaching from is found over in Genesis chapter 39. It might be a familiar passage of scripture to many of us, particularly if you grew up in church, and we'll talk about Joseph today. Did you know Joseph had a coat of many colors? And the reason why he was given a coat of many colors is because his father's favor rested upon him. And so one day Joseph did something drastic, y'all. He went to his brothers. He was one of many. And he went to his brothers and he told them a dream he had how God would favor him above all the others. How many know sometimes you got to keep the dream close to you before you communicate it to others? Did you know that even though sometimes people tell you they love you, they are not after the things before that you are after? So sometimes you got to hold the dream tight before you release it. And so Joseph communicated the dream of of what he had interpreted of, of God using him and in such a powerful way way for his purposes but the brothers did not like that sort of dream and so they they plotted against Joseph to try to kill him and they took him out and they threw him into a pit but the pit was not the end the pit was simply the beginning as the Egyptian caravan rolled through and they took Joseph off to off to Egypt but it was there that God began to do a new work for the purpose of of Joseph uh, for purpose of his life but most of all for God's purpose and he took Joseph and he and he put him in charge of Potiphar's house a, a special person in Egypt and it was there that Joseph was in charge of the household and that's where we pick up in Genesis chapter 39 so Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care with Joseph in charge he did not concern himself with anything except for the food he ate now Joseph was well built and handsome And after a while, a master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to bed with me. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to me with care. So no one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then... Could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. And one day he went into the house to attend to his duties and none of his household servants were inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and he ran out of the house. Today, the title of my message is simply what I'm going to be talking about. The title of my message is Temptation. Here's my subtitle. Y'all ready? Ladders and Leavings. Ladders and Leavings. Let's pray together. Father, we are grateful to be in your house today. We're grateful to have the opportunity to gather, God, whether it be online or in person as your church, collectively as one unit. And Father, as we've sought out already to glorify your Son through worship, now we open up our hearts to the preaching of your words that it might penetrate our souls. 
that we would never be the same. God, speak to us today like never before. We love you. We are grateful for what you are doing in our lives and doing in the, in the earth. Even in the craziness of COVID, you still have a plan, God, that you are executing to perfection. So God, give me the words to say today that we might receive it and be changed by it. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, come on, and everybody said, you may be seated this morning as I do every Sunday. Come on, let's hear it for the worship team. Once again, such a powerful job in leading us. Today, uh, a couple of years ago, I had an unwanted visitor in my household. Uh, it is not one that knocked on the door and I let come in. It was not one that stopped by unexpectedly and I welcomed into my home. It was, a, it was an unexpected visitor that found its way inside that I wanted no parts of. I found actually its remnants inside of my garage. I found its droppings laying around as if he was feasting on all the food <laughs> In our house. You know what I had? I had a mouse in my house. You ever had a mouse in your house before? Come on, somebody. I, I found, it's not someone that I wanted. I found his remnants. He was inside. I saw that he was there. Matter of fact, I saw him with my, with my own two eyes. I was outside in the garage looking to see if I could find him, and I heard a little squeaky sound. I turned around, and he popped his little head out behind the drywall, and we locked eyes. And he didn't run away scared. He looked at me as if he had been living there for years. He looked at me like, what's up? How'd you sleep last night? You want a cup of coffee? How are things going? You want to sit and have a conversation? Before I finally flinched at him, he ran. So, so I did what, what any good homeowner would do when he found something like that inside of his house. Uh, I went uh, to Walmart, and I got me one of these things. You ever seen this? A mouse... A mouse trap. Now it wasn't as big as this one, but I had a I had a game plan, man. I had an invader inside of my home that's got to be gone. So I went and got a mouse mouse trap and I and I baited it just right with peanut butter. I mean, I made it look like a Thanksgiving meal. I piled it up just perfectly, and I found some of the remnants of where he was, and, and, and I had to put it in a special place because I've got five kids, and so I had to tuck it and hide it away in such a, a special place so that my kids wouldn't get to it. So I set the trap all the way back. I put the peanut butter on top, and I slid it all the way underneath a workbench in my garage that the kids couldn't get to. And so I waited, and I waited. And every day I checked it, and the peanut butter was still there. And so he hadn't taken the bait yet. Then one day I'm in my living room. I'm sitting down watching TV. And out of nowhere, I heard the, and I, I got him. Finally. That little thing ain't getting away from me anymore. But after I heard the, I heard a kid crying in the garage. And in walks my son with a mouse trap on his hand. And I quickly ran over to him. I got his little fingers out, and I said, what would possess you to grab the thing? He said, I didn't know it was a mousetrap, Dad. And I said, what did you think it was? He said, I, I dropped something. I looked underneath the workbench, and I thought it was a shiny toy. And so I reached my hand out for it. I thought it was interesting because to one, the trap was food. But to the other, it looked like a shiny toy. Now, the reason why I say that today, because it's a great way to get into our talk about temptation. Because you know what temptation is? Temptation is enticing, isn't it? Temptation is enticing. By, by, by its very nature, it seems appealing to lure you in. I mean, metaphorically speaking, it looks like food to some... But to others, it looks like a shiny toy. And where it becomes an issue is when you reach for it. When you reach for something outside of God to meet a God-given need. That's what 
temptation is. And the results of reaching outside of God is you will always get hurt. What I'm trying to say is every time you explore, every time you reach, every time you go after temptation, you know what it is? It's a trap. I think this would be a great way to describe the way the enemy is trying to set up many of our lives today is it's a, it's a trap. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's a trap. That's what Joseph is experiencing over in Genesis chapter 39 as God has elevated him to places from the pit. Now in charge at Potiphar's home, his purpose for his life is beginning to play out, but there is a problem. Because part of the problem is not Potiphar, part of the problem is Potiphar's wife. She comes to Joseph, who is well-built and handsome, good-looking dude. She comes to him, and she tries to seduce him with the temptation, and she tells him, at a place of his life where things are beginning to play out right, she tells him, come to bed with me. Now, did you know that's what, the way temptation works oftentimes in our life? That's how temptation is. It comes when you least expect it. It comes at times where everything seems to be playing out perfect. Sometimes it even comes on Monday morning, even in the mundane of your work schedule. It comes at times when you least expect it, and it whispers sweet seduction inside of your ear, come to bed with me. Which leads me to ask you the, que ask the question today. I wonder what's whispering inside of your ear today. I wonder what the temptation is that sweetly and provocatively speaks inside of your heart with temptation and says, come to bed with me. Now, it looks different for everybody. Your temptation is not a other person's temptation. It looks different for us all. Now, now, it's all temptation, but it has different manifestations. Now, for some of us, our temptation might be just like Joseph, where he has been tempted to go, uh, 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 to, to fall into this trap. Maybe for some of us, our temptation is to go outside of our marriage by a physical affair outside of the one God put you with into the arms of someone else because you're looking for some sense of intimacy. Now, the sense of intimacy is a God-given need that he gave us all, but you're reaching outside the confines of the way God constructed it in order to meet the need. And when you reach for that temptation... You're going to get hurt. But maybe for you, it's not, it's not an affair. It's not a sexual temptation. It's not seduction for you. Maybe it's not going outside of your marriage, but maybe for you, it's not outside your marriage, but maybe it's gossip. And the temptation to talk is far greater inside of your own heart than someone else who, who struggles with a sexual temptation. That's when it gets real quiet in here. You see that? Because it's the temptation to talk, but maybe it's not the temptation to talk or the, the act of sexual temptation, but maybe for you it is bad business practices inside of your work schedule that you're participating in that is, that is far-reaching outside of God. You know what it is? It's a, it's a trap. But what amazes me is how we judge other people based off of their temptations because it's not our appetite. But let me tell you something. You might as well look in the mirror and there is something that will seduce you and take you outside of the realm if you are in to reach for a God-given need outside of God and it's a, it's a trap. And the results is you're going to get hurt. Now please hear me. Please hear me because this is very important. Temptation is not a sin. Did you know that? Temptation itself is not a sin. It's when you give in to the temptation is where it transforms and changes forms into sin, missing the mark and going away from God. It's when you actually lay down with the very thing that is seducing you, that takes you away from God and in 
to sin. And it's very important for us to get that perspective today because there are many within the sound of my voice that think something is wrong with your relationship with God because you have these crazy thoughts and you're tempted to do these different things and you feel shameful and you feel there's something wrong with you because you, 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 you've got these different types of temptations. But can I propose to you today that the very nature that, that, that you Understand that it is temptation is not for you to doubt your salvation, but it is actually proof of your salvation that you actually have something cognizant on the inside that says something is not right here. What is wrong with me? That is the conviction power of the Holy Spirit. It confirms your walk with God and not tries to separate you from God. What separates is when the transform, tra- uh, the temptation transforms and changes into sin that separates for you you from God. But it is actually the proof that you are walking with God and you understand it. Well, I don't face any temptations. Be careful of the religious people who who utter those things. I don't face any type of temptation. I am sanctified and godly and I am just upright and perfect. Here is the problem with all that. Listen, if you have not had a head-on collision with the enemy when it comes to temptation, then you're probably headed in the same direction as him. You better preach me down when I'm, shout me down when I'm preaching good because that is the truth. The enemy comes all the time to try to take you out with temptation. He will bait it just right with some food. He'll make it look like a shiny toy to try to get you to reach outside of God, to try to grab a hold of something that only God can fulfill that deep need inside of you. He'll get you to reach for it, but it's a... It's a trap. He'll try to get you to take the bait and walk away from him. Did you know that Jesus himself was tempted? Your pastor is tempted. That's the way the nature of temptation in Luke chapter 4. Jesus is taken up by Satan himself and said, If you are God, turn the stone to bread. That is the lust of the flesh. Then he takes him up and shows him the kingdom. says, You can have the kingdom if you bow down and worship me. You know what that is? It's the lust of the eyes. And then he said, if you throw yourself down, call the angels. If you're really God, call the angels down to save you. That's the lust of pride. Jesus was tempted. Your pastor is tempted. We all face temptation. But I'm grateful today. The reason why I can escape temptation and defeat temptation with the self-control of the sanctifying power of God is because Jesus, by his death on a cross, made a way for me to have victory over temptation and the sin that tries to so easily entangle me. Did you know that today? He made a way when there was no way away from it. That's why it says in 1 Corinthians, look at it, what it says in 1 Corinthians. It says, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. Somebody shout, he is faithful. Come on, shout it like you know it. He is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will always provide a way out so that you can endure it. Look at your neighbor and tell him he made a way. Come on, he made a way. And now, because of the power of God, of what he did on the cross, I'm provided a way. I'm given a way. And I have to begin to listen to the Spirit of God in self-control to not take the bait of temptation, but find the way of escape that God himself has provided. So Potiphar's wife, y'all getting anything out of this today? So Potiphar's wife comes and she tries to seek him out as prey. Come to bed with me. And look what he does in Genesis chapter 39. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in this house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then? Here it is. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. Joseph refused. 
Now, it wasn't like he said, let me come back to you in a little while and I'll let you know my answer. But the response he gives when he refuses, watch this, is character and integrity based. When the temptation, the bait of temptation comes, he says, how could I do this to God? And how could I do this to my master who has entrusted me with everything? And what we see actually is the temptation that he is going through is actually the opportunity to build character and conduct inside of his heart. That might not play out in the moment, but it's going to play out ultimately at his purpose. What God was doing is building something greater in him now that would prepare him for his greatest purpose later. The character and the integrity he needed later down the road. Listen, please hear me. God is not the one who tempts you. The Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 13, when tempted, no one should say God is tempting me for God cannot be tempted by evil nor does he tempt anyone. Watch this. God does not tempt You know what God does? God builds character. God builds conduct. But I tell you what God will do with the temptation that comes your way. God will take the temptation and he'll use it as an opportunity to grow you in character, grow you in conduct, to build you up just like Joseph, to put you in the place of your greatest purpose. The result of everything you are going through, the temptations you go through. That, that's why he says in Romans 8, 28, and we know that in all things, God works for the good. It doesn't say all things are good and all things are perfect. It says that he will use all things for the good. That means, that means he will take every temptation, every difficulty, every circumstance you are going through, and he uses it to build something greater out of your life. The first thing I want to talk to you about these building moments that come out of temptation that deal with character and conduct, I want to talk about ladders. I want to talk to you about ladders. Now, I can't talk to you about ladders without having one up here. Y'all pray for me this morning. Can you do that? Can y'all pray for me? Thanks, Ross. Let's hear it for Ross. Thank you, Ross. Man, that's a lot bigger than I thought. I should have told him a six foot, but I didn't. Oh, let me go on this side. Now, how many are afraid of heights? Anybody afraid of heights? I don't. I, I don't you, you will not catch me dead on one of these. Uh, actually, you will catch me dead because I probably will fall off. But you will not catch me dead on a ladder because I, I hate heights. It's climbing to a different did you Did you know that a ladder is a lot like life? That at the top place... Is God's purpose for us? Come on, did you know that you're on, you're on a journey just like Joseph to get to the top place of God's purpose for your life? I mean, you're climbing in character and conduct to get there. But oftentimes we are so worried about what happens at the top. But here is the reality. The reality is that Each rung represents the support system to get us to the place God has for us. Did you know the goal of your life? Oh, I better be careful. Did you know the goal of your life is not actually the goal? I mean, the priority for many of us is I got to get to God's purpose. I got to get to God's purpose. I got to get to God's purpose. I got to be in God's purpose. I got to be in God's purpose. I got to get to the place of God's purpose. I got to get there. As quickly as possible. But the primary issue is not the place of purpose that God is concerned about. The primary issue is not the place of purpose. The primary issue is the process that gets you there. The reality is, even though we want to be in this realm, God wants to see us climb the rungs. For God to build something inside of our heart that prepares us for the place he is taking us. Although we want to get to where God wants us to get, God is concerned about us being who he wants us to become. So each rung supports another. And so when I face a temptation, it is nearly another step closer 
that builds the character inside of me that takes me to the place God wants me. Here is the issue. So many of us try to get to a place that we aren't prepared for. Did you know that you should never try to get to a place without the preparation of God first? Did you know you are more likely to fall? That's why somebody needs to know. Don't ever put yourself in a place that God hasn't put you there first. And so what most of us do, you know what most of us do? Most of us try to, most of us try to manufacture our own opportunities by skipping rungs, skipping people to put us in places that we aren't built for. And the faster you climb, the harder you fall. You know why? You're not built for it. The mere pressure, the mere problems that come your way will be crushing to your character and your integrity if you aren't built for the place. And so every time we skip, every time we provide our own opportunities, every time we try to get to the top, it is the result of an unsanctified ego concerned more about what God has for us than what God wants to do in us to get us to this place. But if you get there by yourself, you ain't going to be there long because you will crush, be crushed under the weight of it all because God has not built inside of you the places he wants to take you to. He's trying to get you there. So you know what we've got to do? Begin to focus on the process, the results of each rung. And as God builds in you, through temptation, through trials, it'll take you to the place he wants you to go. And you'll be prepared for it. That's, that's why it's important to follow the process. Look at your neighbor and tell him, follow the process. Come on, tell him, follow the process. So Joseph refuses and refuses and refuses. Every time he refuses, you know what he's doing? He's climbing up another rung. He's climbing up another rung. He's building character. He's building conduct. He's building integrity. It's preparing for a place that he's going. And then it, it accumulates to this point. In Genesis chapter 39, verse 11, one day he went into the house to attend to his duties, and none of the household servants was inside. Shh, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. She caught him. By his cloak or his jacket. She called him by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. Did you see that? Joseph, when seduced by her, he ran so hard that when she caught him by the cloak, you know what he did? He left the jacket and he ran. He got out of there. Now, notice in the scripture, he never came back to it. He didn't, the next day after he ran, he didn't just resist one moment and then return the next day and say, I came to get back my jacket. You know why he didn't, never went back for the jacket? Because he knew that after he resisted and he came back, after what he had left, he would actually be returning to the greatest source of his failure if he went back to the place. where That's the second thing I want to talk to you about. It's not just latter moments. It's leaving moments. It's leavings. It's leavings. It's leavings. Could it be today the trouble with temptation that we often face is that we keep going back for the jacket instead of resisting 
Instead of refusing, we keep returning back to the place we know is not good for us. We keep going. But I got news for you today. After you resist and leave that place, if you keep going back and returning, it will be the greatest source of your failure when you keep going back to it. I wonder what temptation it is today that's got you returning and coming back for the jacket in your life. I wonder it is. Because I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm about ready to preach to somebody online today or in person. You know that relationship ain't good. You know that dude ain't no good for you. You know he lied to you when you got together. Oh, I love God. But he ain't stepped in church one single time. You ain't seen it. He posted one scripture on Facebook and all of a sudden he's God's greatest gift to you. You know he ain't good. And that's why you broke up with him the first time. That's why you you said, no, 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 I'm resisting. I'm getting away. I'm not returning back to the relationship. But for the sake of your own loneliness I'd rather return to a relationship and be with somebody even though I know it's not good for me just to feel some sort of comfort even though I should have left my cloak where it was that's the, that's the greatest source of your frustration and failure today is you keep going back to places you have no business being you keep returning instead of resisting. You keep going back. That's why when that phone rings and you know it ain't no good, you keep answering. That's why when you're at work and you know it's cutthroat and you know the decisions you've made go against your character, but you keep going back. You keep going back for the jacket. You know it's, it ain't no good for you. Can I give you some... Some lessons to learn from Joseph today. Come on, somebody. Can I give you some lessons to learn? You got to learn a lesson from Joseph. You got to resist and you got to run. You got to leave your jacket and don't ever come back. You got to run. If you want to run, Listen to me. Don't run back. You got to resist. Listen. And run to his grace. Run to his love. Run to his mercy. And run and know that the place I'm going to is going to give me a sense of fulfillment because I'm fulfilling his purpose rather than go back and experience the failure of my sin over and 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 over again. There is nothing to go back to. Look at your neighbor and say, there's nothing to go back to. Why you keep going back when you should have left it a long time ago? But it's tempting, isn't it? It's tempting. It's tempting. It's tempting. I need a source of comfort when I'm cold. I need something to give me some sort of strength at the moment. I just need it. So I keep going back. I keep going back to the, to the jacket. But this is, this, is what, this is what Joseph knew. The reason why he resisted and he ran and he left his jacket is because he was able to see a greater picture outside of that moment in time. And he knew God is preparing me for something greater. Why do I keep going back to something I can't have in this moment? He knew, he knew it would compromise his calling. If he kept going back, it would lead to failure. He saw something greater. Isn't that what happens with temptation? You know what temptation will do? Temptation will make you focus on what you can get in the moment. Rather than the ultimate picture of God's purpose for your life. He'll make you focus, watch this, on the one thing you can't have. Rather than all things he has given you by his grace. You want proof? I'm going to give it to you. In the beginning, God created man and woman, put them in the Garden of Eden, and made everything perfect in relationship with him. And he created the trees, and he filled the garden, and he said, you can have anything you want. You can experience all, all, everything you want inside of the garden. Just, just don't go for the 
The one. Don't touch the tree. That tree right there. Look at all the other trees. You can have everything you want. Just don't go after the one. But then the enemy comes in. He slithers in like a snake, doesn't he? And he vocalizes the temptation. Did God really say? You see the manipulation in temptation? Did God really say, don't take it? He just, he just knows you're going you're gonna to experience things like he would or he does. He, didn't really, he doesn't want you to have the one thing. And so disregarding the all, they went for the one thing they could not have. And the results was the sinfulness of humanity that resides in all of our hearts. My question is, what about all the other trees? What about all the other fruit? What about all the other created things that have been created out of plentifulness and beauty, but yet it's been perverted by temptation to go back to the one thing you can't have and not looking at all the things you do have? Could it be today that the way we fight and face temptation is to arm ourselves with the awareness of all of the other good things God has given us? Could it be getting a clear picture of the garden, the garden and seeing I, I don't have to go back to one thing, but I can leave the one thing for the ultimate things? that God has provided me with in my life. Here's what I'm trying to communicate. Don't miss this. You got trees. Did you know that today? You got trees. I didn't say you got a tree. I said you got trees. Uh, you got more than one tree. But it's about high time we get enough perspective to stop focusing on the one we can't have and look at what God's graced us with. Look at all the trees you got in your life. Come on. I wish somebody would open your eyes and take a good hard look at all the trees. You can't see the trees because of the forest. Look at the trees around you. God has been good to you. God has been faithful to you. Keep, stop, keep going back to the one thing and see all the things. God, I wish somebody would stand on your feet that's got some trees in your garden and start looking around at the bountiful blessings of God to say, why do I keep going back to the greatest source of my frustration? God has freed me. I got trees in my backyard. Come on, I'm picking fresh fruit. Come on, look at your neighbor. Tell them I got fresh fruit. I'm squeezing lemonade. Come on, I got orange juice. I got something good down deep in my life, and I refuse to keep going back. I got trees, so I'm going to resist the one thing. Stay standing. I'm almost done. Musicians, you can come. I'm about ready to land this plane. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to focus on the one thing I can't have, but I'm going to see all the other things. And thank God. I know God's got something greater. Come on. God's got an ultimate plan and purpose. He's given me trees. i got to focus on all the other trees and resist the one for, for what is greater. It reminds me of every time I go to a local place. I'm not going to say the name of it. All you can eat seafood. <laughs> and they got a trick. You know what the trick is? You sit down and you say, I'm going to take all you can eat crabs. And they say, all you can eat crabs. Okay. But this is what they do. Y'all know what I'm getting at. I want crabs. I want to eat crabs. I want to pick grass. So before the crabs come, what do they put in front of you? Here come the hush puppies. Here comes the corn on the cob. Here comes the shrimp. Here comes the bread. And if you go hungry, 
You're going to eat what's in front of you. You're going to eat that thing. You're going to eat that thing without having it up. And the first time I went, I ate all that was in front of me. So that way when the crabs come, I had no more hunger for what I ordered in the first place. But I caught on to the trick and the plan of the enemy. You know what I did every time they put the hush puppies in front of me and the steam corn and the steam shrimp and the bread? I say, you can take it right off the table because I'm waiting for the ultimate thing. I'm waiting for the good thing. I'm waiting for what I ordered. Could it be with temptation is the same way? You got to have enough self-control on the inside of you that says I'm passing on every temptation the enemy puts in front of me because I want to feast on the purpose of God. I want to feast on his grace. I want to feast on his love. I want to feast on his plan. And I will not give in to anything less other than what God has ordered for my life. If you agree with that, would you give him a shout of praise in the next to declare self-control and reliance on the Holy Spirit for every temptation. I'm not giving in the one, but I'm seeing the all. And I will allow every wrong to result in how God is building up my life and taking me to the places he wants from me. Come on, do you agree with that today? He's got more. Let me pray for you this morning. God, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice today. It's facing a temptation that they're really on the borderline of giving in. It happens to us all. We, we all face temptation. Father, what we need more than anything is the Holy Spirit to speak louder than anything calling out to us. Speak to us by your Spirit, God, that would strengthen our self-control to see that temptation is merely an opportunity for God to build in me the places he is taking me to. Help us, Father God, to not keep coming back. There are some temptations that have had a hold on many of us, and God has delivered us. He's brought us out. But many in this room are facing times of temptation. They keep wanting to go back. God, help us see more than just the one thing. See the ultimate plan and the purpose to resist to run so God strengthen your people today increase our self control and our faith we know that you're building a greater purpose out of us God and we don't want to give in to anything less so we push aside the hush puppies (laughs) we keep pushing aside the steam corn Because we're clearing the plate for your greatest purpose. That means more to any meal that we can have that the world can put in front of us, God. Give us that type of self-control. In Jesus' name. Now, come on. Would you praise God today if you agree with this message? Come on. Come on. Lift up your voice today in adoration, in acceptance for what God is going to do. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you for joining us.